Welcome to this edition of Fox Focus, presented by Blue Diamond Almonds, the official snack nut of the U.S. ski team and U.S. snowboarding. Get your good going. Sick. Sack. Sick. Sack. It's the sound a world-class skier hears going down the mountain at 100 miles an hour. And what really gets interesting at those speeds is taking turns around the gates. There's not much time to think, unless, of course, you've got the world-class mind of Ted Ligety, the reigning world champion in the giant slalom, the Super G, and the Super Combined. I might embarrass you when I tell you this, but I honestly think you're probably the smartest ski racer ever. All right, that's not <laughs> embarrassing, I guess. Well, you're probably <laughs> humble. When I watch you and your tactics and your approach to the sport and your knowledge of everything within the sport from equipment to safety, the whole thing, you seem really wrapped up in it. I think what's cool about ski racing is in a way it is a thinker sport as well. In order to get better, you know, when you're one of the best in the world, nobody's ever done what you're doing on skis. So yeah. you have to be able to figure out what the next step is and how to get better from there. And you know, the equipment side of things is really important. So you have to be able to think a little bit differently that way to make your equipment the best it can be and that you can make good decisions. You know, when you're, on, when you're skiing at 100 miles an hour, you're definitely gonna save yourself. While he might not be Rodan's The Thinker, Ted Ligeti's thought process certainly qualifies him as a unique artist in the sport, a skier who pushes the boundaries, whether it's measuring the distances between the gates, gauging momentum, or sizing up a mountain. So would you say when you're inspecting a course, you're looking just more at the terrain that's gonna be coming at you, not as much of where the gates are placed? I know the gate distances every day in training, and I know what the gate distances are in the race. From so every I... gate, from one gate to the next? Yeah, I mean, generally there's a general so rhythm. So you have a way now of like, figuring out what the gate distance is on something just by sizing it up? Like, can you literally ski by and go, oh, this gate distance is? I can kind of general feel it within a meter or two. And generally, there's a five gate section that's 26 meters, you know? So I have a kind of feeling on that. What makes Ligeti so astonishing is the preparation he's done to get to a place that most athletes can only dream about. A place most people call the zone. But even when he's in the zone, his amazing mind never stops. So what is your gauge? Like, you're, are you gauging how much pressure you're actually gonna put on your skis or how much inclination you're looking for? Or what is the adjustment that Ted Ligeti makes? The gauge is just how fast I'm gonna be going and just judging the speed. Aren't you trying to go faster and then faster and then faster? Of course, but you know, if the course is 30 meters, you know you're gonna be going really fast. And so there's gonna be some speed control based in certain sections. And if it's a 25 meter course, you know you can just you know go as fast right. as you can. It just helps your confidence level a little bit as well. If you know exactly what 26 meters feels like, then it's easier to judge uh, your skiing on that. So while most people might think they know Ted, training and race day are two different things, and nobody's got a better race day switch than Ligeti. I think training and racing are entirely different things. I mean, I think everybody tries to make them the same, but I would say generally, you know, most skiers ski far, far worse in a race than they do in training. Why do you think training. that is? Because there's pressure, you know, you can blow out 10 runs a row in training and have one good run and, and be fast in that one run and think it's good. But in a race, you can't blow out that run, you know, so a lot of guys hold back. You know, I've trained with a lot of guys from different nations and they'll be super fast in training and can't put it together in a race. And I think it's the guys that are really good are the guys that can ski as close to their training speed as in a race. And it's his clear mind that has enabled him to have such success. From winning the U.S. championships in the slalom to becoming the first man in 45 years to win a triple crown at a single world championships. A feat that hasn't been recorded since Jean-Claude Keeley won four medals in 1968. It was pretty surreal for sure. Winning the Super G and the combined were definitely surprises for me. In a lot of ways that actually added a lot more pressure on the giant slalom right. because you know, that was the event that I was really there to win, you know, as right. defending world champion. That's interesting, because I had the same feeling when I won my gold in Nagano in the Super G. Then I had the downhill to race, and the downhill was one I had been professing my gold in. So what's going to be putting pressure on you going into Sochi? Or do you even feel pressure at the Olympics anymore? There'll definitely be pressure at the Olympics. I think it's impossible to say there's not pressure at the Olympics. Doing what I did at the World Championships in 2013 is going to be very tough to repeat, obviously. You know, a lot of things have to come together in order, in order to win three gold medals. That's why it hasn't been done in 45 years. Right. So, you know, my main goal is to win the giant slalom there. And I think that's my best chance for sure. If you were to pick something you're thinking about and something that you are having to manage going into Sochi in a positive or a negative way, what is it? 
I wouldn't say I'm trying to manage anything particularly different than I would normally. I think the best way to prepare for the Olympics is having a good World Cup season. It gives you good start positions, it gives you good confidence, and that's really what I think helped me last year in the World Championships because my World Cup results justified that confidence. Another scheme that Ligeti has been involved in is starting his own company, called Shred, based on his nickname, Ted the Shred, because of the way he leaves everything in his wake. The company sells helmets and other high-tech products with style. So what do you do for Shred? What is your part of the company? Besides be ripping Shred and Ted and like kick everybody's boo hiney out and about. I do a lot of the product development. I do a lot of the design stuff. I have, you know, a lot of the ideas. You know, I don't do the day-to-day -day operation stuff, but you know, I'm constantly, you know, emailing back and forth with the guys there. You know, every single day I'm, I'm dealing with stuff. So it's, uh, it's fun to be able to, to do something else besides just ski race. So there's definitely life after competing, but don't expect Ligeti to call it a career after Sochi. I know that Sochi's probably kind of like the decoration on the cake for your career. You've had a really, really successful career. Is there a result you're looking for in Sochi that would allow you to think about maybe being done skiing or that Sochi's just another stop? Ski racing is a pretty good job, so I plan <laughs> on skiing for a while longer for sure definitely through the 2018 Olympics and then oh, great. we'll see from there you know I'm only 29 years old right now and you know the average male winner in the World Cup is 30 years old so you know I still have a lot of a lot of good years left so um, I see no reason to, to hang it up yet.